Listen to that horn. Wizard. Wizard. Look at this car. Oh, you like? I... Oh. <laughs> he's down. Uh, uh, he's, he, he's stealing my material a little bit here. Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And fate has sort of brought me and this Cadillac together without the help of you all on YouTube, other than making these purchases possible by you all watching these videos, which I am eternally grateful. But actually, I saw this car at a car show seven years ago before Hoobie's Garage existed, chatted the guy up for a long time, said I would love to own this car if you ever wanted to sell it, even though I didn't have probably $2,000 in the bank at the time. And he actually remembered me, wrote my phone number down, and called me all these years later and said, hey, I'm ready to sell my Cadillac if you're interested. And well, <laughs> of course I was. This thing is an incredible, timeless classic, but underneath is a very modern, comfortable ride that I could take cross country right now. Well, with a few repairs because it's been sitting for quite a while. It is a 1949 Cadillac Sedanette, which means it has this swoopy kind of fast back body, and it is an icon when it comes to Cadillac history, not to mention Motor Trend's very, very first car of the year in 1949. The magazine was only a few months old, and this was their first car of the year for many reasons. If you think you've had it rough these last few years with pandemic restrictions and supply chain issues making it hard to get certain things, well, we have nothing on the greatest generation back in World War II because from 1941 to 1945, all non-essential production was shifted over to war production, including cars. So basically whatever you had in 1941 was the car you had through the entire war and cars weren't really built to last back then. Everything was rationed from gasoline, basically every single essential because well, we were trying to win a war. And coming out of that, obviously, there was a lot of pent up demand, but we had to figure out how to actually make things again that weren't for blowing things up and killing people. So it took several years before there was a great leap forward in cars and everybody was looking to the future and wondering what the future of cars would look like. And Harley Earl, head of design at General Motors at the time, approved a drawing penned by Frank Hershey, a concept Cadillac that turned into this and started a trend that really exploded in the 1950s. Yes, you are looking at the very first finned car. Well, actually it was 1948 and this is a 1949. It's the same body style essentially, but Harley Earl wanted to make this thing look futuristic and the coolest things in the day were fighter planes, obviously. And the P-38 Lightning with its twin tail had a fin on the back similar to this and he replicated it with the 1948 Cadillac. And of course, by 1959, the fins were, well, as big as your head seemingly. They kept growing and growing and growing with more chrome and more bling until they were sort of dramatically chopped off around 1960. And there were a lot of other huge innovations with the 1949 Cadillac and some cool things. But this one is different. This one is a resto mod. And with that, let's start a tour. Now I'm still back here on the fin because I wanted to show you this really cool trick, which means no millennial is going to be able to vandalize this thing because of the hidden gas cap. Just take a look at this. You hit this button, it pops, the tail light goes up, and there is the fuel filler. They didn't want to have a hole on the side and make it look bad, so they did this, and it's just so so dang cool. The whole rear quarter treatment of this car with the fastback rear, it just looks absolutely fantastic. And that's why outside of the convertibles, which there are very few surviving because convertibles, you know, water gets in, rest of the floors, they're all gone. It's the most desirable body. This one is an older restoration resto mod with a very thick, very nice, but kind of patina black lacquer paint that I can't wait to see what Van Gogh will be able to do with this thing. The chrome is all in pretty good shape. I mean, it could use a buff. There's a few little chips here and there, but you know, it's a driver. It's a car I can actually use. And it's a car the previous owner actually used, took it on road trips to different states, car shows basically all over the Midwest. It was his driver show car, but it's something he hasn't done in three years because of the pandemic and his health issues. He doesn't want to risk it. So the car has basically sat for three years, but thankfully the car didn't seem to mind. You see sort of the old 
white walls with the wire wheels. I may need to get new tires, but this car has just the right amount of chrome and bling in my opinion to really look sharp. It's sitting lower because it's on a custom front end. The rear is air ride that is adjustable. So it has that resto mod stance, but this car was done uh, a pretty long time ago. I think at least 25, 30 years ago. And you can see this gorgeous front end with the hood ornament, the Cadillac V, and these, well, bumperettes or dagmars as they called them in later years because they got so big and bulbous like a uh, bountifully busted movie star back in the 1950s. 1948 brought a dramatic change in the body style and shape of the Cadillac. Basically got a shorter wheelbase, but it was wider, much more like a modern car through the ensuing decades of a land yacht versus a really long, skinny thing like cars of, you know, pre-war from the 1920s and on. But in 1948, when this body style was unveiled, they still had the flathead V8, which had a zero to 60 of like 20 seconds. It was a dinosaur from before World War II. And overhead valve engines, as we know, certainly were the future. 1949 was the first year of that. 160 horsepower, way, way more powerful and like 200 pounds lighter than the flathead. Now the motor in this one, well, it's not the original motor. It's, it's really cool. We'll go in there in a little bit, but let's go inside first. You can see the seats. Uh, they are definitely modern. You see the modern plastic here and the modern seat controls. I'm told this is out of an Oldsmobile Tornado and they are super comfortable. But you see the dashboard, it is still very much Art Deco, late 1940s with the clock that is working. Most of the gauges up here do work or do something. The ones that don't, they have a gauge down here for the temperature and the fuel gauge. And you can see down here, I have vintage air conditioning, which well, sadly doesn't work, but it's all there. The only thing I don't like about this interior is the modern Sony stereo, which obviously nowadays we have vintage looking options with Bluetooth that would look great in this dash. Having this modern Sony stereo just kind of disrupts everything else going on with this car, which was really, really well done. Still has the old crank windows and the side window here. You can see it's a lock and then you can twist it out, I think, or I, I may have just broken it. Let's see. Uh, well, I, that, that's, that's manual operating now. Not that I really need it because I'll have vintage air conditioning working in this thing. Some of you eagle-eyed Cadillac fans are probably noticing that the steering wheel isn't quite period correct and you're absolutely right. It's from a 60s Cadillac and you see this really cool kind of nautical, well, steering wheel around the steering wheel and that's for the telescoping column. You unlock it by twisting it and then it pulls in and out. So that's just a really cool touch, certainly not correct for the period, but it looks absolutely fantastic in the car. So it's kind of a greatest hits of Cadillac. And speaking of greatest hits, let's go under the hood. So nowadays, if you were building a resto mod Cadillac, you would be putting in an LS engine, obviously. One most recently, an LT4 supercharged in a 41 Cadillac at Barrett Jackson sold for half a million dollars, absolutely insane. And then even weirder, a North Star powered 1949 Cadillac sold on Bring a Trailer a few years ago for like $99,000. A North Star from a 95 Cadillac, very unreliable engine. This one though, it has a wonderful, wonderful thing. It is the big block, 500 cubic inch Cadillac V8. Basically the biggest V8 the Cadillac ever put in passenger cars. Going to the rear wheels, and it looks like it's out of the early to mid 1970s. If it was an early 70s, it would have more power, so that's even better. But you can see the chrome valve covers. It does look sort of appropriate in here. Certainly a lot more modern than something from the late 40s, early 50s. You can see the AC compressor on top, but very tidy and very well done. You can see that's the wiper motor sticking out. That's original and correct for the 1940s, but just a very simple, tidy engine bay that really just needs a detail. It does have a few leaks though, and a few minor issues like, geez, like the air conditioning not working. So we will drive it up to the car wizards. But first, you gotta hear this thing. Let's turn the key, push the start button. Then you have this deep yacht-like burble to this thing, this big block V8. Oh, it sounds so good. And it cruises so well. I wish I had air conditioning, but man, am I so, so happy with this thing. And the air conditioning, well, that can be fixed, which is why we're going to the car wizards. 
Hopefully he likes this thing. Oh, with that 70s Cadillac drivetrain and steering, I can drive this thing with my pinky, which in 1949, I don't think there was power steering yet. And then I can pull out into traffic and it accelerates like a modern car, thanks to that big block. Transmission shifts smoother. Now we're cruising at 45 and it is dead quiet other than a little like a squeak rattle that needs to be addressed. I don't know if chassis ears will ever find it. It's just one squeak, otherwise this thing would be dead quiet. And that's the thing that struck me with this car when I test drove it. Yes, seeing it seven years ago, falling in love with the look, the stance, everything about it. I just loved it, thought about it for weeks, but then I drove it and it's one of those few Restomod customs that was actually built to drive, to be used. Unlike say the Superbird where they threw all kinds of modern parts at it and well, it, it drives kind of worse than the original in some ways. This thing was done right and I have disc brakes so I can stop like a modern car power disc brakes and now we can get on the highway. I guess I can floor it. Accelerating smooth but steady. Here's 60, it just shifted. 65, 70, and the speedometer is accurate. 75, 80. I got this thing up to 90 once and I lifted. It could have still kept going probably to 100 or more. And it's smooth, it's wonderful, it's quiet. I can't believe it. Now I know the car wizard loves old cars, but he hates modified cars and figuring out how to reverse engineer all that as we went through with the Superbird. So I have no idea what he's going to think of this, but I know what I think. I'm in love. Listen to that horn. Weezer. Weezer. Oh my God, Becky. Look at this car. Oh, you like? I Oh. <laughs> he's down. Uh, uh, he's, he's stealing my material a little bit here, uh, but I don't actually drool. That was actual real drool out of your mouth there. Was that, a, was that a heart attack? Was that? Oh my God, I've never seen something so beautiful. Where did you get this? I actually, a long time owner. I met him at a car show years ago. He remembered me, had my wow. number. He called me. This is amazing. Here, let me park. I know you're excited by the look of it, Wizard, but uh, oh, yes. I, I do love have Cadillacs. I do have bad news. What's the bad news? It's been modified. Oh no! <laughs> yes, it's, it is a resto mod. Oh, a resto mod? Like the Superbird. Hopefully, they did a better job on this. One. It's it's way way better done, way simpler, and yeah, just just gorgeous. So I, I pop the hood. Go ahead and open it. Let's see if you can identify the engine just based on looking. That's definitely not stock. No, it's not. It would have had like a 331 or something in That looks like a Cadillac big block. It is a 500 cubic inch Cadillac big block. I was gonna say maybe a 472 or yeah, a 500. Yeah, it's the or... big one. Wow. Early 70s, uh, they quit making them in 76, but. It's got the old Quadrajet carburetor on it. Mm-hmm. It looks like they did a pretty good job. It is very clean, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, the air conditioning system here on top, which doesn't work. I would love for that to work again. Looks like the old ports though, huh? Like R12. Oh boy. Let me see if there's anything in there. Hardly anything. Not, yeah, not much. It may just need a recharge and maybe we can convert it to 134. Okay. Well, so that's the big issue. There's also an annoying squeak that never stops, unfortunately, at just driving down the road. And then the fuel gauge, this thing sat for three years. I think the fuel gauge just got stuck. I filled it up and it's still stuck on one quarter. But otherwise, uh, drives great. The suspension though in the back, it seems a little low. It's an air ride. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's sitting a little low. Yeah, I can tell. It's got the wire wheels on it. I don't think it's like an active system because it doesn't have a pump or anything. Well, I can see a Schrader valve right here. <clears throat> this is probably where you fill up the suspension. Oh, so it's it's like a tire, huh? Yeah. Okay. You just fill it up to whatever PSI. Did he mention anything about a PSI he filled it to? Or? I don't know. What do you think? 15, 20, 30? 
15, it's kind of just basically to get it to where you want it on the right height. Right, and I see you playing with my tail light. Where's the gas? I know you put gas in these in the you back. You push the button. Push the button. There it is. That is so cool. Yep, very, very neat. And it's probably the original mechanisms that's just survived all these years without it looks original. needing fixed. Just good old well-built car. It is. I like the engine. I like that it's a big block. I, I don't know. I know the suspension is custom. I have no idea what that entails. The rear end, the air suspension, there's a clunk. So I'm curious what's underneath because I, I couldn't see that much. We'll get it on the lift and see what they did. Cool. That burbly V8, big block. Very yachty, huh? It sounds like one of our yachts running, doesn't it? Oh. Anyway, let's see what lies beneath. Sounds like the motor's working hard, yeah. huh? Definitely put more effort into lifting this thing. Oh no. It's uh it's really dripping. Yeah, that's transmission fluid it looks like. Huh. Okay, well we normally work front to back, so anyway, something to look forward to. There's some sort of an aluminum radiator or something. It is a funky custom built looking radiator isn't it, it for that shape is. huh the steering gearbox has a little bit of a drip not too bad though yeah that is definitely odd because well it's obviously for a car from 1949 but they needed modern cooling so it's a thick but skinny radiator huh yep. okay fit into the radiator spot it doesn't overheat so that's good well they did good on that it's got disc brakes like you mentioned. Yeah. They're about half gone, but they're still good. That's good. Does it have nice tight steering? Very nice tight steering. It's got new shocks. This engine fit in here nicely. Yeah. You can see where they welded these brackets that wouldn't have been here from the factory. Yeah, this is a totally different front subframe from something. You Maybe. see where they cut it here and kind of got it as wide as they needed it and welded it. and. It was really popular to do it with a Mustang II back in the day, so I wonder if that's... Eagle-eyed, probably vintage car guys would know what this is, but... Yeah. Who knows? Looks like they did pretty good, though. Yeah. There's lots of little seepages and things. It's just from age, just even though it's recently done, it's compared to the age of the car. Right. There's lots of little things to take care of there. Here's our transmission, probably a TH400 to handle the power. Modulator. Not dramatic. Modulator's fairly dry, but what's all that fluid coming from? There's a little bit here that, see this cork pan gasket? Uh-huh. It just needs a new gasket. Okay. That's what all this stuff's from, but this is your output seal. There's really, the ceiling surface, you see that it's balls deep into that thing. It's all the way down. Oh. It's well, not sealing very well. What a very scientific description there, wizard. Okay. Yes, it is. We may have to look into, maybe the seal's just bad. I don't know. We'll have to get the drive shaft out, but it's definitely just leaking fluid in there. Okay. Looks like some Flowmasters. Yep. They sound great. They do. U joints are good. Drum brakes in the back. So here's the air suspension. Mm -hmm. It's just they're called hijackers or whatever. There, you put air in them, and there's the air part. Okay. Right now, there's nothing in them. But they're not blown. It looks like. No, they don't. They look fairly new, actually. That's good. I can see that because the air suspension's collapsed. It's been touching right here. Oh, so it's been bottoming out. Yeah. Okay, on the rear axle huh so you'll definitely have to keep up on the air these systems even when they're brand new you can put air in them it lasts a couple of weeks and it'll slowly I don't know why okay it doesn't seem like they're ever fully airtight so a little bit of detective work to figure out uh, what parts match up for the leaks on the uh, mm -hmm. tail shaft and oil pan the steering little leak probably not worth taking care of uh, I could probably put some Lucas in it and it'll take care of the tiny little bit that's coming yeah. out. Yeah, oil change obviously, but otherwise, solid car. It is. I mean, if it cruised up here at 80, no problem. Just the stuff that I expected, the air conditioning. 
Oh, fingers crossed. We'll see on that. So. I think it just needs to be charged. I've seen some crazy resto mods. The Superbird. Yeah. Them. Yeah. This one actually was done very well. Oh, good. Very good. All right. I guess then I'll leave this one and take something home. It doesn't look like I'm taking the Aston Martin home. Uh, what is going on here, wizard? Well, the interior is coming out so we can get to the fuel tanks and pull the fuel pumps and check them out. That Magic Mike's not here. He's running a triathlon, actually. This overachiever, that guy. He's single, you know. Oh, he is? He's yeah. been single for a while, which is, I mean, he's ripped. And anyway, yeah, he's working on the 928 as well. It has an exhaust leak. I haven't gotten to that yet either, so I have to leave that. So I guess it's just the 355, huh? Yes. Which last time I was up here, you said there was no bill. It was on the house. Yes, we took care of the shifter shaft seal and then the valve cover gaskets and all that. So, yes, ready to go. So no bill. I'm up on my rent. I can just leave. I'm actually not going to chase you down. There's no I'm, nothing. You're, you're paid up. I'm leaving. All right. Thank you for watching. Bye, wizard.